You're watching C9 TV. At 7, catch up with the TV family you just love to hate. It's the Bundy Bunch. Then at 7.30, take a trip through the romantic canals of Rome alongside one of history's most passionate figureheads with Mussolini in Love. But now, it's time for a peek into the mind of our favorite little devil, Angus. That's right, get ready for Stepdad. Airing now only here on C9 TV. It's, it's Step Dad. Dad. Starring Arnie Kegger as Alan, Lori McTip as Mary, Marty Barkey as Figgy, Jason Butt as Hootie, and little Freddie Durst as Angus. Stepdad. Morning, honey. Morning. Say, you cooking bacon for breakfast? Oh, no, dear. No bacon here. Hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Morning, Ma. What's for Bricky? <laughs> Angus, what did I tell you about riding your skateboard down the stairs? Sorry, Ma. I just wanted to see if I could grind the handrail. Guess I can't. Angus? Uh-oh. <laughs> Angus, did you set the doghouse on fire again? No. Well, I guess Sparky just lit it up himself then. His name is Sparky, isn't it? Gosh, Angus, you know I'm under a lot of stress right now. The Gym Teacher Association of Associated Teachers Teaching Gym is having the annual county sports banquet at our junior high school's gymnasium tonight, and I'm in charge of hosting it. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, well, I just found out our stupid junior high school is getting rid of Taco Tuesday, so I'm pretty stressed out myself, Alan. Angus, be nice to your dad. Stepdad. Oh, Angus. Coming. 
Oh, it's Principal Hootie and Little Figgy. Morning, Mrs. Farmer. Just swinging by to drop Figgy off before I head to my big conference this morning. Alan said he'd take Figgy with him on his way into work. I did? Oh, oh yes, I did. You okay there, Alan? You seem a little burnt out. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. I'm fine. Just a little stressed about the banquet tonight is all. Oh, Alan, please. We're not on school property. No need to call me sir in your own home. Ugh, it's so annoying your dad is the principal of the very same junior high school we both attend as junior high school students. How do you think I feel? I haven't gotten away with skipping a night of homework since I lost my last baby tooth. <laughs> I know you're going a little loony over this banquet, Alan, but you're the best junior high school gym teacher in this whole darn county. Don't sweat it. Thank you, sir. I, I mean, Principal Hootie. <laughs> well, I'm off. Don't want the Junior High School Principal Association of Associated Junior High School Principals to have to wait to put their IHOP order in because of me. Oh, and by the way, Ellen, not to put any more pressure on you, but I heard the guest speaker at the banquet tonight is of very high esteem. Not the type of person you'd want to embarrass yourself in front of, if you know what I mean. Anyway, see ya! So much for not putting any more pressure on me. All right, Alan, let's shake a leg. I'd like to make it a first period before I turn 13. Well, here's the thing. Oh, brother. <laughs> I've got Miss Handy, the art teacher, covering my first period today so I can run over to the flower shop. I totally forgot I told Principal Hootie I'd get you kids to school this morning. I have to go pick up the floral arrangements for the banquet in 15 minutes. Nice going, Alan. Mary, could you take the boys? Gee, Alan, I would, but I told you I have brunch with the Neighborhood Housewife Association of Associated Neighborhood Housewives. I simply can't. Darn. That's right. All right, everybody cool their jets. Cousin Philly left his spare bike here when he came to visit last weekend. I'll ride my board, Figgy can ride Philly's bike, and we'll get to school on our own. Oh, thank heavens. And you boys will head straight to the school? Of course! <laughs> All right, well, you better get going. I gotta brush Sparky's ashes off my shirt and be out the door. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Figgy. Bye, Ma. And? Bye, Alan. <laughs> not really going to school right now, are we? Hell no. <laughs> All right, then go over the plan for me again. But, Figgy, it's the most perfect plan of all the perfect plans we've perfectly planned. It's simple, really. We're going to ride over to Big Bubba's Beautiful Babes and Buffet, hand Bubba $9,000 cash along with a key to the Junior High Gymnasium, tell him to send every stripper he's got in that club to the school auditorium tonight where they're sure to disrupt Alan's little sports banquet. Of course, we've reserved another $1,000 to slip to the raunchiest girl Bubba's got. Once she gets to the gym, we'll have that stripper run up to the mic and loudly congratulate her sugar daddy, Alan Farmer, on a beautiful banquet, sabotaging Alan's happiness and humiliating him in front of the county, the school, Principal Hootie, and most importantly, my ma. Gnarly! You got the keys to the gym door? Nicked them from my dad's belt last night. You get the 10K in unmarked bills from the Japanese bathhouse? Duh. Come on, Figgy. Let's get to it. After tonight, my loser stepdad will be out of our lives forever. <laughs> Don't touch that remote. Stepdad will be right back. Hi, I'm Gary Pickle from Gary's Pickles. Don't spend your last nickel on a pickle that's far too fickle. The choice is simple. Come on down to Gary's Pickle. We got dill pickles. We got sweet pickles. We got hot pickles. And that's it. No, simply must come down to Gary's Pickles. I don't know how you get here, but I'm sure you can figure that out. Listen, I'm just a simple pickle boy. Please have mercy and snag a pickle. We ain't never gonna sell you a pickle that's artificial or sharp as a sickle. So give your tummy a tickle and fill your mouths with Gary Pickles, Gary's Pickles. Stop in soon. They won't let me out till you do. We now return to Stepdad. Well, Figgy, we made it here. 
You bet we did! And just in time for the lunch buffet! Would you get your mind off the food, Piggy? We got a job to do here. Hey, aren't you boys a little young to be in here? Hey, aren't you a dumb bitch? <laughs> Ugh, so rude. Listen, lady, we're here to see Bubba. He in the back? Yeah, he is. I'm guessing you already know where to find his office. You ask way too many questions. Why don't you go shake a tail feather for that dude getting hammered by the bar? Guy always carries ones. Oh, yeah? And how would you know that? He was my bus driver back in elementary school. <laughs> Guy keeps a swear jar at the front of the bus, and believe me, he collects. Probably just killing time between shifts. Now beat it, bitch! Sure, whatever. Wow, Angus. You really put her in her place. What can I say? I hate women! <laughs> Guess who? Oh, shit. <laughs> come in, come in, come in. How's it hanging, Bubba? Still fat as shit, I see. Hey, screw you, kid. You're not even supposed to be here. You know my DJ still had the active restraining order against you. And restraining order, schmeraining order. We got business to discuss, fatty. <laughs> What you need? Me and Figgy are hosting a little soiree in the school gym tonight, and we could use a little entertainment. A school? No way, Angus. You're trying to get me locked up again. Too risky, huh? And what if I threw you this 9K I got here? Still too risky? All right, maybe we can make something work. <laughs> That's what I thought. Now listen up. We're surprising some people with your, uh, employees tonight, okay? I put a key to the joint along with explicit instructions on how to get into the place discreetly below the bills. I'm assuming there won't be any problems. Angus, baby. You know my girl's a professional. I'll go over everything with them. Don't worry about it. Sounds good. I'll be seeing your crew tonight then, Bubba. You bet. Oh, and, uh, can Figgy here get a to-go box for the buffet? No problem. Just talk to the bartender. Yes. All right, come on, Figgy. School's not even out yet, and we've had such a full day already. Yeah, well, you better take a nap or something when you get home, because we got a long night ahead of us. Hey, boys! Oh, no, it's my dad! Hootie must have played hooky after hogging down hotcakes at the IHOP conference this morning. Now, what are you kids doing home so early? It's barely even fifth period. Uh... <laughs> oh, shucks, well... You see, Principal Hootie, I've just been thinking a heck of a lot about my dad hosting the banquet tonight, and, well, golly, I got so anxious for him, it started to make me sick to my stomach. Nurse Francis said I could cut out early, but I was too scared to shred gnar all the way home by myself, so Figgy here rode back with me. Oh, please don't be mad at him, Principal Hootie. It's all my fault, after all. Well, I don't love the idea of Figgy missing school, but... Oh, what the heck. In the name of friendship. <laughs> you know, boys, I cut out of school early today myself. We noticed. <laughs> All right, then, Figgy, run back home now. I'd like to have a moment alone with Angus. Yes, sir. Say, has Figgy always had that bike? I don't know. Huh. Well, anyway... I just wanted to say, Angus, I think it's really great how supportive you're being of your stepdad. I know it hasn't been easy for you or your mom since your dad passed away in that mysterious badminton accident with only your mom as witness, but Alan is a great guy. 
Yeah, sure. I'm serious, Angus. He's done a lot for your mother, and she loves him dearly. And he cares a whole heck of a lot about you. Okay. Well, I just think it's great you guys have been getting along, is all. I'll be off now. Yeah. See you later, Principal Hoodie. See you. Oh, and one more thing. You didn't hear this from me, but your stepdad has got something pretty cool planned for your 13th birthday. Alan and I may be getting along, Principal Hoodie, but I'm sure whatever that dingus has planned, it can't be that cool. I wouldn't be so sure. He might have even gotten you, oh, I don't know, a brand new skateboard. Wait, what? Are you serious? See you at the banquet tonight, Angus. Oh, no. That stupid asshole got me a new board? He'll never give it to me if he's fired and divorced and possibly dead by suicide. I gotta stop Bubba's babes! Will Angus make it to the middle school gym in time to stop Bubba's babes? Find out after these short messages. Hi, I'm Gary Pickle, and in the last five minutes, I decided to rebrand and open a completely new business, Gary Pickle's Golden Fiddles. Hey, diddle diddle, is your fiddle too little or perhaps too brittle? Answering a riddle, it's Gary Pickle's Golden Fiddles. Come on by today. You might not ever leave. Tomorrow, a full moon and a string of gruesome murders threaten to ruin Detective Brady's birthday celebration. This just got personal. It's Transylvania PD. I don't care what sort of birthday plans you got, Brady. There's a wolf on the loose, and you and Detective Dip need to get your asses out there and catch that freak. Damn it. I don't know, Brady. Something about this case just ain't sitting right with me. Seems like it's time to pay a visit to an old friend. <laughs> Hands up, fake face! What did I do now? An all-new Transylvania PD, tomorrow night on C9 TV. And now, the shocking conclusion of this week's Stepdad. <laughs> A little to the left. Now right. Okay, up a bit more. This good? Almost. Just a hair to the left again. Up. Okay, now down. <laughs> it's just a welcome banner, Alan. It doesn't have to be perfect. Look, Mary, I appreciate your help. I really do. But the Gym Teacher Association of Associated Teachers Teaching Gym is going to march through that gym door any minute now. And they are a stuffy bunch. So yes, this banner kind of has to hang perfectly. Oh, Mr. Farmer, we're here. Okay, never mind. Just pin it up. Pin it up. <laughs> well, hello, Coach Farmer. I see the gym is looking very nice. Very nice indeed. Thanks, Canterbury, or Coach Winterbottom, sir. Considering you're the commissioner of the GTA ATTG, your approval means a lot to me. Oh, Alan, we're at a social function. Lighten up. Besides, you're the man running the show tonight. You can save your little platitudes for someone like... Well, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Principal Hootie. Great to see you again. Great to see you as well, Coach Winterbottom. Anyway, Alan... I'm sure you've been informed that we have a very special guest speaker this evening. Yes, Principal Hootie told me we had a guest speaker, but I still haven't the slightest idea of who it might be. Well, he's quite the estimable figure. Took me ages to lock him down. But you know, high school gym teachers have quite the pull these days. I'm sure. That said, I'm certainly very happy teaching junior high gym. Oh, sure you are, Alan. You never know, though. If you nail this banquet tonight, you might just get to level up to high school. Anyway, I'm going to go find my seat. The guest speaker should be here very shortly, though, so keep an eye out. Ta-ta! What a loony tune. <laughs> Principal Hootie, did you happen to see Angus this afternoon? He was supposed to meet us here half an hour ago. Oh, I'm sure he'll turn up shortly. 
He seemed very excited about the banquet. Excited? excited. Women disguises sure are uncomfortable. Why don't you shut the fuck up and keep an eye out for the strippers? I'm going to try and figure out who this mystery speaker is. I think that's him coming now! Wow, look at all these Secret Service men. This speaker must be a pretty important fella, Alan. So I've heard. They seem to be clearing a path for him. Please, keep calm, everybody. It's only the Dutch. <laughs> Holy fuck! It's the goddamn President of the United States of America! Mr. President, sir, it is an absolute honor. Yes, yes, you must be Alan, our host. I must admit, you've done quite a fine job preparing this gymnasium for my arrival. Thank you so much, sir. You know, the truth is, I didn't even know you were coming. Uh-oh. I'm guessing you weren't expecting them, either. All right, where's Alan Farmer? Well, I stand corrected. <laughs> oh, my word, Alan. What have you done? I don't even know what's happening. Sure you do, Alan. You're my boy. Babysitter, he's her babysitter. Uh, Alan is this woman's babysitter, and, and this is a group of other babysitters. A club of very European babysitters. European? All right, Mr. Farmer, now you've offended me. <laughs> Angus, is that you? What did you do? This dance is for you, Alan, from your candy girl. Alan Farmer, you're the sexiest boyfriend in the whole wide world. This just turned into my kind of party. Would you step out of it, dipshit? This is fucked! Alright, that's enough. That's enough! Good God! I came all the way from Washington for a good old fashioned county sports banquet, and I'm greeted with whatever this is. <laughs> Now somebody better start explaining what exactly it is that's going on here, or I'm going to send every single person in this gymnasium to Gitmo. It was him, President Reagan. It was my stepson. I beg your pardon, Alan, but you must have lost your damn mind. That's a red-blooded American woman you're yelling at. <laughs> He's right, Mr. President. I'm not actually a lady. I'm just wearing a wig. Look! I gotta come clean, Mr. President. Here's the score. I gave these strippers several thousand dollars cash I earned from a blackmail sort of situation, along with a backdoor key my friend Figgy nicked from his dad, Principal Hootie, and I instructed the ladies to come here, to this junior high school gymnasium, all to sabotage my loser stepdad's sports banquet. Look, I know, I admit, this was a little out of line, but what can I say? My stepdad, the guy's a pill! I just wasn't thinking straight, Mr. President. I let my anger cloud my judgment and I took it too far. I'm sorry. Aww. Wow. Yes, well, I must say, young man, it's a pretty impressive plan you put together. You're a thinker, a real innovator, an American. I like that. Still, your actions do fall into a sort of morally gray area. For a boy your age, that is. Well, I for one am appalled. Never in all my years of instructing in the field of physical education. Zip it, fruitcake. The president was just complimenting me. <laughs> Mr. 
What was your name again, son? Angus, Mr. President. Like the beef. Yes, well, Angus, I think now is as good a time as any to recite that speech I prepared for tonight's banquet. My fellow Americans, I am honored to speak to you all tonight, parents, educators, and children alike. You know, I've always said that education is the key to success, and that's true. But there are some things you just can't teach in a regular classroom, and that's where you gym teachers come in. You teach the most important lesson of all, the most American one. You teach these kids the importance of winning. You teach them to come out on top, always, no matter the cost. As an adolescent, it's important to learn this lesson. It helps shape you. Look, what this boy orchestrated tonight was shocking, but it took gazungas. Now I know that none of you fine people expected to witness an 11 girl striptease at this junior high school hosted county sports banquet. Lord knows I didn't see that coming. But wasn't that Angus's point? Then did you just want to rip this Allen guy apart? Of course you did. This boy, Angus, he played a dangerous game tonight. And he won. And that's because of you, the county gym teachers. <laughs> now, with all that being said, I want everybody in this gym to rest assured some justice will be served for this crude display tonight. Secret service, arrest these strippers! What? Why? Indecent exposure on school property, dollface. You and your little Jezebel friends are all sex offenders now. Yes, well, you can save your excuses for a jury, pervert. Ha ha! Sucks to be a stupid stripper. No, Figgy. It sucks to be you. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. President, but I have a very firm belt waiting for my son at home. Understandable. Aw, oh, jeez, Dad. Why? Angus was the mastermind behind this whole thing. Listen here, Figgy. It's one thing to turn a bunch of strippers into sex offenders, but my son wearing a dress? Unacceptable. Darn. All right, Figgy, you disappointment. Give me that ear. No, Pa, please don't pull me by the ear again. I think I'm already going deaf. Oh, ouch. Bye, Angus. See you at school tomorrow. See ya, Figgy. Sorry. Kinda. <laughs> Hold on a second. Isn't it a bit unfair for those young women to pay the ultimate price for this young man's ignorant mistake? Oh, come on now, Alan. Don't be such a sissy. Yeah, who gives a rip? <laughs> well, okay then. You know, your dad's a real cut-up kid. Step, Dad. Oh, Angus. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on the C9 TV Evening Editorial, can this baby kick its applesauce dependency? What about the smack? Find out tonight. by myself, Aiden Warren. This installment of C9 TV featured the voices of James Paul LeGraff, Sebastiana Gullo, Taylor Garlow, Bob Marini, Ian Doobie Dubach, Ron Garner, Dave Renaud, Kerr Ferguson, and myself. 
Special thanks go out to Haley Warren, Kelly Hogan, and everyone who dedicated their time and effort to this project. C9 TV. We'll return next Friday the 13th, which is, I don't know, two or three days after the 11th.